Hey guys, welcome to another heavy metal diecast video. And today we have here is a North American F-86 Sabre. So this was an American transonic jet fighter that was introduced into the United States Air Force in 1949. Um, there were around 9,860 aircraft built in all variants, and that was including those that were built in Canada as well as Australia. So uh, uh, besides the United States Air, Air Force, uh, this aircraft also served in a number of other air forces around the world. Uh, it is probably best known for being America's first swept wing fighter. Uh, so it was a direct competitor to the uh, MiG-15 at the time. And um, they, they were a very similar looking aircraft. Um, and those two aircraft would actually face off in the upcoming Korean War in the 50s, where they would be involved in some of the earliest jet versus jet dog fights. So... And this is a particular example by Corgi. It is in one seventy-second scale, but it is in a little sort of blister packet. Um, so I think these are sort of a more of a budgety sort of uh, Corgi example. I did pick this up for uh, sell from a seller in England for twenty pounds, um, um, and but by the time it got to me, it was it was virtually over. It was around twenty-one pounds to add on to that for around uh, the, for the postage and for the uh, taxes that we do pay on top of our purchases in Australia from when we buy overseas. So all up, um, it owes me around $75 Australian, um, but I think it uh, looks pretty cool, but uh, there's no good holding in this box. What we'll do is we'll get it out of this packet. So this is with the top lid taken off. Um, I've not bought these before, so it does come sort of stuck onto a base. It does look like it's permanently wheels down fixed. Uh, these wheels do roll as well. Well, the front one does feel like it rolls. Uh, so it is uh, affixed to a sort of a base in some sort of way. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll get that off the base and get our grubby little hands on the real thing. Just a quick note, underneath the base it has a little plate for the actual base of what's holding the aircraft to it. Um, there is a little screw that you do need to uh, un undo and then you can get it off. And this is it once you've got it out of that packet. <laughs> they, they really don't want you to get this thing off the, off the base that they provide you with. Um, this was really hard to get off once you've unscrewed it even. And then as you can see underneath there, there are another couple of screws here. If you want to take the aircraft off this stand and um, have a look at it properly. But um, well, this, this is as it would sit if you took it off and just had it on, like if you want to just you know, present it down here. On the, on the actual stand. It is, the, as I said, this is the first style that I've bought from Corgi like this. Um, but look, overall, it doesn't detract anything from the model. It's still a well-made model. The canopy does slide back and forth. And that is a little novel feature. And you can, um, you can see uh, inside there. And um, you can see the, the weaponry. These did come with uh, uh, six 50 caliber M3 Browning machine guns, as you can see in the front nose there. Um, later models, they did uh, experiment. They did have four 20mm um, cannons in the front of this. But um, I think you could only fire two at a time because of the, sort of the kickback from it. Um, but these also fired armour-piercing rounds out of the 50 calibers and also um, armour-piercing incendiary rounds, out, which had some magnesium in them, which uh, would, uh, would ignite when um, hitting aircraft. But a lot of the fighting, depending on the oxygen levels, um, they, they wouldn't, wouldn't work that well because, of course, fire needs oxygen, so... But I think overall, this, this particular model is pretty cool. And um, this is one from Korea. This, is, this, is, uh, this particular aircraft was flown, for Major, flown by Major James Hagerstrom. Um, and this one is from uh, 1953 in South, that was based in South Korea. Um, Hagerstrom was an actual ace from World War II as well. He actually shot down six Japanese aircraft uh, during that conflict and would also become an ace in the Korean War as well where he would shoot down um, eight uh, MiG-15s, as well as he also had a shared credit for a, a, another victory as well. But um, And, uh, well, that would make him one of only seven US pilots to achieve that, uh, like being ace in uh, two conflicts. So uh, that was a you know, pretty pretty rare thing. But um, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll take this off this base and so we can get a good look underneath the aircraft as well. So here we are, but... Finally off the base, um, you just undo the, there's two screws that go, go into there that hold that base into place, as you can see. And we can finally see underneath this uh, sabre and have a real good look at it. 
Um, they're not, look, the silver finish is really nice. Um, I'm hoping, hoping there's not too much reflection from the lighting here so you can actually see the, the nice lines that are on it. Look, it's, it's really nicely built, and I'm sure these are a reasonably uh, good budget uh, rendition to get. Uh, but unfortunately, it was a little bit pricey for me to get it here. I couldn't find these sort of here. And um, when I could grab it for uh, 20 pounds and you know, I was just a bit over the same price to get it to me, I thought, oh, I didn't have a Sabre yet. So I thought, oh, why not? I'll, I'll take the uh, punting and have a go. But the, the wheels do do roll as well. And the beauty of it, the whole thing is, is obviously, as you can see, fully assembled. Um, you don't have any uh, worries about putting anything on or anything like that. It all does come fully assembled. As I said, the cockpit does does open and close, and you can um, you can see uh, Major James Hagerstrom in there. He's kicking back. Um, you can also see, I think, on the cockpit, you can sort of see some of the markings on there. His victory markings on there, and uh, little little writing on the side, little skull on there. And it's got all the all the correct um, markings on there, all the correct tail markings, call sign markings, like all the numbers and everything like that are all correct to his particular aircraft from that that period of time. And I, I think, as I said, it's a very nice looking uh, unit. I reckon it's pretty cool. And um, well, it's definitely a very unusual way that Corgi have sort of done these. I think there are a number of these around. And um, th this is a, a Korean Wars legend one. And as you saw, it was in a sort of a different different kind of uh, presentation box than it normally comes in. But I think overall, it's still, you know, I think it's pretty cool. It's still, it, it's, it's a Corgi build. It is very nice. And um, I think it's a, a good addition to your collection if you really, if you, uh, you know, after an F-86. All right, I'll wind this up and uh, I'll put this on the deck here. We'll see if it uh, sits nicely, which it does. I haven't had to assemble anything, so it should be perfect because it's, Hasn't had these sausage fingers touching it. But um, you know the deal. I will take some photos of this, uh, chuck it up at the conclusion of the video. If you did you know, enjoy the video, throw us a like. That'd be awesome. And you know the deal. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And thank you to all those that have been. It's been uh, you know, overwhelming the support that I've been actually been getting on this channel in such a short period of time. It's, I, I thank you all. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I will wind this up. So um, enjoy. And once again, you look after yourselves. And thank you very much. Cheers.